So now we're going to take some questions from the Discord. Uh, if you don't know, we have a Discord that you can join. And every FTC Live episode, we allow teams to ask questions uh, that will definitely be read off during the show. So we're going to go ahead and start off uh, with Roboteer5291, which asks, what types of contract extension and risk setup? Yeah. Oh, uh, Roboteer5291 asks, what types of controls do you guys have on your turret extension and risk setup? Yeah, so the turret, or like, I talked about this a little earlier, but the, um, we have like, we use the joysticks and then we uh, basically move an imaginary X and Y point once the turret gets lined up into the back of the robot. And we move that X and Y uh, coordinate point with the joysticks and then the turret um, horizontal lift and the twist servo all follow that one point in order to get the block parallel with our robot, because we always assume that we'll be straight with the foundation, because we always drive flush with it. Um, and then that algorithm allows us to place the blocks uh, pretty fast, because since we don't have mechanism. Awesome. Another question we had from the Discord was from Adam, and it was six stone auto win. So do uh, uh, you have any comments on that? <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it would have to go pretty fast <laughs> to do a solo. Yeah, I don't know. All yeah. right. Uh, Ashray uh, from the Discord asks, what changes are you planning on making as you prepare for Houston Champs? Yeah, we'll be making quite a bit of changes, uh, both robot and programming. And uh, we don't really want to reveal those right now, but you'll see in a couple weeks from now. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Mr. K Olsen. asks, Mr. K asks, what makes the best partner robot? Um, a good partner robot for us uh, is heavily made up of consistency. So we always want a robot that's not going to break down during the match, is going to be consistent with whatever they are able to do. So either that be a feeder or a stacker or whatever they can do best is what we want, but consistency is the main thing that we look for. And I'm just going to follow up on that. Let's say you have a robot that's probably a really good feeder, but in qualification matches, you got to be stacking if you want to win. How do you figure out, hey, I want that feeder on my team. They're going to be consistent feeder, even though they may not have been the best stacker when because they had to stack. Yeah, so um, when we're looking at our qualification matches, uh, we have a pretty intense scouting system, so we don't actually look at uh, what your scores are or um, what your ranking is. We look at what we want out of you as a pick, so we can either look at stacking individually, feeding individually, or both combined. So um, we'll look at that as uh, we determine picks for state competitions or whatever level. Okay, um, so George from the Discord asked, so what is your highest stack you've made in a match, and then what is the highest your lift can go to? Uh, highest in a match, I think, is 12. I think we've done it two or three times, uh, and our highest is also 12, so. Yeah. Uh, Tacklebat asks, how do you train new or young members? How do you recruit? What is your sustainability plan? And are you part of a bigger organization? So let's start with the recruiting and training new members. How, how do you guys go about doing that? Yeah, so recruiting mainly for us is through our demos and through the teams that we mentor in either FLL or when they move up through junior FLL through FLL. So uh, mainly our recruiting is first related recruiting, but we also recruit members through demos and just like friends and family and then um in order to train those members we try to recruit them towards the end of the season like after worlds or um during the summer so then we have that whole summer to train members and then get them developed on whichever tasks they feel like they want to do during the competition season cool and um one of the things that I think is important is your team has sustained for a very long time. So it's cool to see that you have some idea on how you're going to continue going in the future. Um, Kuali on the Discord asks, um, how consistent is your autonomous? Uh, yeah, so our autonomous is pretty consistent. 
Um, it always works better than E ones for some reason. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it it's pretty fast. Um, the main um, reason that we went for deterrent is because of auto um, and Talyot because we wanted to pick up from the side. Uh, we saw that initially at the beginning of the season um, because all we would have to do is just drive back and forth and then the turret handles for most of the correction. Um, so as long as the positioning of the robot is accurate, then the autonomous would also be accurate. Yeah, and we'll be focusing on consistency for our next competition, which is Worlds. Yeah. And so um, in one of our next questions right off that from Batmobile said, uh, how did you guys get such a reliable autonomous? Like, is there anything you're willing to share about how that works? Uh, yeah, I would say one of the most reliable things, um, actually at Worlds uh, Division Finals last year, we suffered from this, is that our robot hit the lander and this is primarily because of the carpet underneath the field at Worlds. Um, so over the summer, we took this into account and we've actually made um, into our program where it'll calculate the coefficient of friction that the robot has with the playing field and it'll adapt the program to whichever playing field we're running on, um, depending on the competition. That's pretty cool. And are you using any motion profiling system? Are you using Roadrunner, Pure Pursuit? Uh, do you guys use odometry? Um, any yeah. insight into that? Yeah, yeah. So we do use uh, odometry or dead wheels. Um, and along with that, we use a nonlinear feedback controller. Um, I, 254 used it in 2018. Um, so we've made our own version of that um, from the... Um, document that they put out there, or I think it was from some college, but uh, we've used that document and then improved our autonomous based off of that. Um, and then, yeah, we also do motion profiling too, so like acceleration, deceleration, stuff like that. Funny you should mention 254 because Roboteer5291 asks, how much inspiration for your design came from 254, 34, 76, 195 last year in FRC? Yeah, so some of our inspiration actually did come from those teams. But uh, as you can see, since it is an FTC robot, uh, much of it is different, and then it's a different game. So uh, we took inspiration that a turret is a design that is possible, can work. And then from there, we improved on it and then adapted it for this game. Yeah, I remember when I first saw a video of your robot, I saw the six-wheel drive, a turret, and a thrust bearing. I'm like, hmm, that looks familiar. <laughs> So Brian Ranery from Edutech uh, asks, how's your turret designed? It looks like it supports a lot of weight on a normal lazy student. How could you support all that weight on that Susan? Yeah, so it's basically just a nine inch uh, lazy Susan. And the turret overall uh, is probably the heaviest part of our robot. I think it's around like, uh, like 20, 20 to 25 pounds uh, on that lazy Susan. And we're able to just support the weight through the Lazy Susan and then some structural components below it. Yeah. And how did you wire it? Because getting a wire on a turret can be difficult. So at the start of the season, um, we, our turret wiring was actually, we didn't really take it into account. So um, we were planning on just wiring it around the outside, but then we realized that through that, if we want to rotate 270 degrees in either direction, that's not going to happen through that kind of design. So then we redesigned our turret completely and then stuck the wires up through the center of the turret. And then um, now the wires just rotate around a pivot point underneath the robot. Awesome. And tell him, uh, this will be the last question from Discord, is asking, is the gripper rotator controlled by a servo by V4B-esque design as in the servo rotates always to keep it straight mm -hmm. unless given the command to two by two? since I always notice the block is straight. I think he's just asking about the control system for the claw and whether it always keeps the block straight. Yeah, yeah, so like in uh, auto um, and in teleop, so like uh, auto we use field relative, so like the turn turns towards this uh, specific point and then the twist servo will just uh, account for whatever air it has and always turn parallel to the cube. And then in Taliop, we always do robot relative. So the block 
will always stay parallel to the robot when we're like moving it left or right to deliver onto the foundation. And we do have the capability of turning the block to a 90 degree position to stack that to that group. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we are now going to start the trivia. Could you roll for the trivia, please? Yeah, here's what we're going to do, guys. If you're interested in playing trivia, uh, and maybe some orange juice or whatever Sean just got there uh, for a uh, $20 Amazon gift card. Uh, we That's what we're giving away today. All you got to do is join the call in channel queue in the fun discord. So once again, if you're interested in playing for a $20 Amazon gift card, playing some FTC trivia against miles today, join the call in channel queue. And we're going to pull somebody out of there in just a couple of minutes for that. Once we get to uh, some questions that we just took from the live chat. Yeah. So, awesome. uh, so while we're waiting on that, we'll get our first question from the live chat here from Mecca Muffin. And he says, uh, does DataForce focus on notebook? If so, what does your process look like? Yeah, so we try to focus on everything. So um, you can see this through, we've won a couple Inspire Awards. So we make sure our notebook is strong every year. And our notebook is consists of daily entry logs. So that's a handwritten notebook. And then we also have a second engineering notebook, which keeps track of our business plan, sustainability plan, outreach, uh, CAD designing, and programming, and so on. Cool. Nick15772 asks, how much driver practice does your team do? Yeah, we do quite a bit. Um, basically, whenever the robot's ready to go, it's on the field uh, practicing or running in autonomous. Um, we try to spend uh, as much time on autonomous as we can, just because of how much you know, it's like 61% of the points this year. Um, so we try to spend key to winning matches. Uh, Fangame13581 asks for any tips for people beginning to program? Uh, yeah, so um, we've actually helped out uh, quite a few teams this year at um, like state tournaments and stuff, even getting their autos ready to run uh, for a match with us. And um, a lot of teams are using like, um, what's it called? Zier Blockly or the, um, the Java or on bot. That's what it is. Um, we primarily use Android Studio and I think it has a lot more functionality to it. And you can like do libraries and to like, you know, Roadrunner or like easy open CV or stuff like that. So I think it has a lot more adaptability to it. Another thing is just like looking out for resources. So there's a lot of FTC resources either on YouTube or just reaching out through Discord and stuff. Awesome. So yeah, so from uh, Jose in the chat, yes, what slides do you guys use and how are they attached to your turret? Yeah, so I, um, I actually uh, sent our slides out. They're somewhere on Discord. Um, I think they're made by a company called Accuride, um, and they are aluminum drawer slides, and then they are attached onto our turret by uh, screws and some uh, support beams too. So. Yeah, and then we created our own custom CNC parts that attach each slide together, and yeah. then... Uh, have hole patterns on there in order to attach it onto the turret base. Cool. Uh, Blue Josh nine seven two five asks, "Why did you use a four by over a linear extension?" I thought you guys said that you use a linear extension. So yeah, yeah, we do yeah. use a linear extension. Okay. Why did you uh, use a linear extension over a four bar? <laughs> so, yeah. So our linear extension goes out like I would probably say like like thirteen or fourteen inches from its starting point. Uh, so we were able to, you know, get that extra extension that we might need for auto or even in teleop um, over the reverse or the four bar. And plus, we don't really have like that much experience with the four bar and like we're doing a turret. So we kind of just want to, you know, stick with something that we kind of know how to do also. Cool. Uh Infinite Awesomeness Studio asks, how do you navigate during autonomous? Do you only use odometry or do you also use other visuals? Also, just a side note, what do you use for your skystone detection since that's probably a question that people have? Yeah, so we uh, use uh, EasyOpenCV uh, for skystone detection. 
And then for navigation and autonomous, we use uh, two odometry dead wheels along with a gyro sensor. So since we don't strafe, we don't need the third odometry wheel like most mechanism teams do. Cool. AMW Girl 17 asks for tips for outreach. Um, tips for outreach, probably just like figure out different events in your area. So we try to go to as many STEM events as we can. So this includes just like first events such as FLL, Junior FLL and FRC events. And then we do this through outreaching with our partners for those events. So outreaching with the partner for first uh, Colorado. And then um, some of the STEM events that we went to this year were like Apollo Palooza, which was like celebrating the moon landing and then um, some like energy day and stuff. So just looking for STEM events in your area and then trying to go to those. And then at the same time, um, just looking for corporational outreach would be like companies in your area that are um, that are supporting other teams and stuff. So we do corporational outreach with some other companies in our area also. Very cool. Jose Bobelli asks, do you use the slip ring? A what? Slip ring. <laughs> okay, I guess not. It's a it's a thing that you can use to wire a turret. I know a lot of RC teams have used it. Um, yeah, no, we don't use that. <laughs> cool. Um, so that's going to wrap up our AMA portion with you guys. Um, if people have more questions, where can they contact you? Uh, probably like Discord or our email. Or yeah. actually, probably not the email. Probably Discord would be the best. Yeah. Yeah. And you're on the fun Discord. Yeah, fun or the FTC Discord too. So either one is good. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about the next giveaway that we have. Tyler? Yep, we're going to start trivia in just a second. So if you're waiting the trivia queue, we will draw for one of you in just a moment. Just a heads up. But we're going to also start our giveaway for the 3206 Series Servo Gearbox from Go Build Us. So if you're interested in winning, I highlight it right there. High tech is what you need to type in the chat right now in order to have a chance to win. It's going to be a few minutes before we draw, but high tech, H I T E C. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.